so time for our next talk. So next up we have Dave Colvany. Um, Dave is director at a WordPress based agency called Interconnect IT. Um, if you've been to any work camps in the UK, you've probably seen Dave speak. Um, I've seen him a couple of times, he's been great. And Dave's going to be talking to us tonight about migrating WordPress, so we're moving up to post to host. So please give a very warm welcome to Dave Coffey. Thank you. Yeah, I'm especially the migrations guy, but the, 
increasingly, as I look after running the company, uh, they keep me away from the servers more and more, uh, which is why when Keith said, could you do a technical talk for us? I was like, okay. Um, and everyone in the office rolled their eyes and said, he's going to talk about migrations, uh, because that's the only thing I really know about. Um, so, I would say that you should do it in this sequence, so it's like a cascade. You do server to server, then you do multi-site to single site, single site to multi-site, and then you do the domain in that order. And if you do it in that order, you can move a development environment onto a staging environment, switch it over to the staging domain, and take that then from the line. It's just exactly the same process. Um, and, that, and that keeps it simple. If you try to do it all in one place, what you end up with is you end up with a development environment that no longer works locally, or you're dicking about with hosts, files, left, right, and centre to make things work, and you get confused as to what server you're on, and then you delete all files on the live server, and you've just broken your development server. I've never done that, honest. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, be careful. Um, so, the, the best piece of advice I can always give on this is just take backups. Take lots of backups. Take, take a backup, do some work, take another backup, and make sure the backups have worked as well, because there's nothing more depressing than noticing that your SQL dump file is zero bytes long. Um, and, and, you know, practice it. Just do a few migrations before you start doing it for paid clients or on, you know, high-profile websites or anything like that. And do some dummy runs. Just get filled and document each step as you do it within the environments you work in. So each environment set, especially when you're working with Linux um, servers, there, there's a high degree of variability. If you're working with iOS, there's a lot less variability, but you've got other problems. So, um, yeah. Anyway, nobody's working on iOS, so let's not worry about it. Um, but after a while, you get it down to a quite practice start. So, there's an official way to migrate WordPress sites, which is you do an export from WordPress and you do an import from WordPress. How many of you think that's a good idea on anything other than a very, very simple blog with an off-the-shelf thing? Nobody. Nobody likes it. And also, um, it's full of problems. I mean, it's, it's kind of easy. Um, I just realised I don't... I can do this as a laser pointer. I can do it on both screens. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, sorry, it's not the time to just look about learning new features, is it? <laughs> um, if we look at the official way, it's quite easy. It's very easy to document and, and spell, and it's good for putting content from one site to another. But that's it. Has anyone tried to do a migration from WordPress.com to self-hosted? I'm going to ask the same question again. Did you enjoy it? No. Did your images screw up? Did images go mental? Um, images were alright. Uh, if they'd uploaded very large images onto the WordPress.com site, you now have 12 megapixel images in your posts because WordPress.com relies on the CDN to do magic resizing. Your, your local hosted WordPress won't. Um, so there's all sorts of little things like that, but it's also just, it's a slow and stupid way. It takes forever sometimes. Um, it does depend on the servers being online and visible. Um, you need to then configure your site again, which is just a slow process. And, and I just get, I don't do it, I never use WordPress import exports, except where we've had third-party CMSs generate a WordPress XML file as a way of migrating data from one to another. It actually works quite well. So if you're, if you're moving from non-WordPress to WordPress, it, it has its place, uh, and it's surprisingly good place, um, but that's kind of out of scope of what we're doing tonight. Um, so anyway, I've got a tool set that I use for migrations, and it's pretty much the same within the office. Um, does anybody use MySQL Workbench? Not many of you. Well, you're going to see me use it, those of you who don't use it. What do you use? SQL Pro. SQL Pro. Okay, is that a paid for application? No, it's another. Um, any, any other? PHP by admin? Command line. 
command line, or command line is hard kind of. Command line is actually one of the best ways to do it, actually. Um, but the, the reason I don't tell you to do command line here is it's just, nobody likes looking at command lines. <laughs> um, also, sometimes you don't have access to a command line. Like the way our servers are set up, you know, one person can access databases, but they can't access a command line. We don't let anybody just do that. Um, Use putty terminal, that's when you are doing uh, command lines. Um, SFTP clients, like FileZilla, and SCP, which is just the more secure um, Unix way of doing it. I use WinSCP on this machine. Um, and PHP info, which isn't really a tool so much as a command in PHP that outputs a, a function in PHP that just outputs everything that you've you know, that Ian knows about the server. I use that to just double check that all the modules that PHP and Apache need for the new site match the old site. Um, so anyway, all those tools are free. Um, it, you'll see that I didn't include a text editor, but if you need that, if, if we're getting down to that level, you probably shouldn't be. If we're talking, you need a text editor. And you kind of shouldn't be doing my migrations, don't give away. Um, anyway, so this is the case one that we talked about, that I showed before in that diagram, it's server to server. Um, so you have a way of moving from A to B file system, and you have a way from moving A to B the MySQL database. And that's it. That's all there is to a migration in its, in its most simple, most fundamental form. Um, can anyone think of extras that would come on top of that? Good, good. Um, I was worried for a sec, somebody would catch me out. But, no, um, but the problem then you have is, you know, you've done your migration, you've moved from server to server, but one, thing, one of the steps that you always do at the end is do your DNS change, yeah? Um, who, get, who finds it a pain sometimes waiting for DNS propagation? A few of you. Um, but what, you, what happens is you change your DNS settings and you can, you know, you see that it's all live on server B. You call your clients up who's in the NHS. Their DNS only updates once a day. I say, no, the site's not live. It's not working. I say, yeah, it is, it is, it is. I say, no, not working. Now, it's been six years since we got caught out by that, but it taught me something. Um, that DNS servers aren't made more legal. And some um, a strict with TTR, so not. So short TTRs aren't necessarily the answer. Um, so does anybody, has anybody here ever used a reverse proxy in order to avoid this problem? Just, just one person. Okay, one thing you can do is, and what, you know, as a WordPress developer, you're not going to set up reverse proxies or that, but your sysadmins can. And you can make Apache act as a reverse proxy. And what a reverse proxy does is what this diagram shows. So people with the uh, slow DNS here, they'll be seeing the old server. But the old server, the minute you know that you're live on the new one, is switch, you switch on the reverse proxy server. And what that does is just passes across all the HTTP commands to the live server because it knows where it is. It doesn't look up the DNS. It just You've told it, and the live server sends back the HTTP response to them, and they just go back to the clients up here. Um, so people with fast DNS get one experience, people with slow DNS get the same identical experience. Um, if, you, if you're ever doing a big kind of migration, it's quite important that it's an immediate switchover. The reverse, um, reverse proxy is one of the most effective ways to, to do it. So when we took over, for example, the Spectator, you didn't want to have a day of uh, this server and no news being updated or anything like that for a big chunk of their users. So the, other, the old server must turn into a reverse proxy for the day. And once we knew everyone was propagated, we turned it off and that was it. End of the old server. Does that make sense? Any questions on? No? Great. Um, but like everything, preparation is important. Um, and what, one of the things I like to just run through is that the easiest migrations come when PHP versions are effectively the same. 
Most girl versions the same. Um, the various modules in PHP um, modules are all set, set up the same way. And that one test that you might want to do is does WordPress actually work on the destination server? Because we've had phone calls from people. Can you do us a quick migration? It's only a little block, 200 posts. Well, like, yeah, I can do this in five minutes without even looking. And then you find that the destinations of it won't run WordPress, you know, for whatever reason. But then you start having to look at things and call up the support, and suddenly your half-hour job has turned into a four-hour job. And you have to just check. So I always say to the client, you know, it'll cost this if WordPress will run with these things on that side. Um, anyway, case two. Multi-site to single site. Um, I think this is too complex for this uh, because it involves lots of pulling out individual tables, settings, and folders, um, and parts of your file structure, and then moving things from different locations, your blocks, DIR, and so on. And it's just, it's very pernickety, and it's well documented online. So if you really have to do it, um, just look it up. But just be careful and charge a lot. Um, next we have domain shapes. This is the easiest one. Your client says, I mean, in this example, I was showing the path from a, a local development environment through to staging, through to the live site. But for example, you, your client may say, we're not, um, we're not called cheapspectacles.co.uk anymore. We want to be a worldwide company. We're going to call ourselves cheapspectacles.com. And you think, okay, yeah, that's a quick change. But you change it in WordPress and back end, and you've got all your links still point to .co.uk internally because the way, because WordPress doesn't use relative links. Um, and actually, WordPress does all sorts of stupid in its data structures, which really spoil doing a quick domain change. It should be easy, but it's not. Um, and it can give a, a confusing uh, a kind of confusing experience to an end user. So, the bad way to do domain switching, and this is what was documented a lot, um, was to take a dump of the database, do a search replace on the text file in the text editor, which is hilarious if you've got a 5 gigabyte dump um, or a 20 gigabyte dump. It just doesn't happen, it doesn't work. Um, then you, you say, do you search replace like that? So I say dev.localhost to staging.lifesite.com, then you upload the dump and wonder where all the widgets have gone and your form entries and all sorts of things have just disappeared, all settings have gone uh, and you've just screwed up your life site. And uh, it, it, this will spoil your day, so don't do that. Don't mess about with dump files. The, the only thing you're going to change on a dump file ever is your schema, your target schema, if you wish to go that way. Um, so, a few just things that will spoil your day on migration day. Uh, caching plugins. If you can, turn them off before you move the site, but you may not be able to because of capacity issues or so, in which case just move the site, kill all, all signs of the caching plugin possible, follow the instructions on how to manually remove that caching plugin, uh, turn everything off in HT access, and start again. Because if you don't, you're going to find all sorts of things pulled from old sites, new site. It's going to be looking in the wrong file paths. It's, it's horrible. Uh, all of them, all the cache and plugins. Um, just, just be aware of that. Some plugins uh, are really stupid, um, but we know that. Uh, some third-party services that rely on the URL, if you change the domain, they're going to get upset. Um, and not taking backups again. I'll, I'll go on about that again and again and again. Um, so, you know, I used to do a lot of migrations and in the end I got sick of it. And there's a lot of tools now to help with this. You've got WordPress Duplicator, you've got iThemes Backup Buddy, and you've got our own search replace. Out of curiosity, how many of you use this? Have you used Internet Guide to Search Replace? Well, a few of you. Uh, I'd like to hope that that's a bit more one day. Um, now, the, this I wrote it because I was just fed up of corrupted databases, you know, PHP serialization is a nightmare in data storage terms. 
and I thought, okay, I'm going to do something, and I locked it up in the napkin right in the day. And then, since then, my colleagues have made it better and better and nicer and nicer to use. And we've just not long ago released version three. It's still in beta, but if you want to test it, and in particular if you do really weird languages, I'd like to know how you get on. Um, so, you know, I, I like to do my moves by a file system, database, and then a search replace. That's my chosen way. And I like it because I can see what could go wrong, what's got missing, if files have gone missing. You know, I can see if file transfers aren't happened and stuff. So, um, I'd actually like to see real-life migration in real time. Go on, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is your chance to see me fail. Um, I'm going to put the microphone down a little bit, which could be wrong. Um, but I think server travels quite well in here anyway. Um, so I've got a copy of my, uh, this is my development machine, and uh, looked up there, and I've got, so on WAMP, I've got David Coveney, got WAMP, which is my personal site, um, but I've started using Vagrant, uh, which I don't know, does anybody use Vagrant? Actually, quite a few. It's, it's one of those things, once you get, start to get it, it's, it's all right, um, but there's still magic going on, I'm not quite 100% sure what's happening sometimes. So. Um, if I want to put my site onto um, a vagrant site, but I want to call it something else because I want to keep my WAMP example uh, to test certain things, to test how it runs on a uh, Windows file system, and I want to see how it runs on a Unix file system. So I want to run two sites concurrently on the same box. So I'm going to call it David Coveney So let's let's take a look. So now I'm going to have to kill this presentation for now. Um, I wonder what happens if I look at that. Um, I'm going to switch over. You should see my desktop. No, okay. Um, you're running this back in there. Okay, let's go into browsers. Here we go. Um, there's David Coveney dot and um, this is my log, pretty much as it is on the live server. And that's how it looks on the vacant. So all you can see is I've, I've done a dump just in case we're getting short of time, just ready. And you've got, I've dropped in the search place plugin already, just for the sake of expediency. Um, so, what I have, I have two file systems. Uh, on the right, you can see my uh, WAMP file system. That's, so this is a web business, so you all recognise it, don't you? And on the left you can see an empty system. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to slide those across and take a copy. Okay. Right, so what, what you're seeing here is as if we're doing it. The vacant server is actually a, a virtual machine running on this computer. It's an entirely different system. It's Debian, Debian Wheezy and the web is running under Windows. Um, the copy is a bit like running about 100 megabits uh, connection. It starts off slow, but it gets faster. And while we're doing that, I'm going to show you what it's like to use uh, MySQL Workbench. Now, here's my web database. Um, and uh, if you can see, we've got our tables here. It's a bit, we've lost some resolution here. So I need to just try and find a bit of space for you. Oh, this is fiddly. Um, so you can see all the tables we've got there. Yeah? So that's the standard WordPress tables. And if we look at the vagrant on the same, I'm just going to put it in David Coveney, just because. Uh, you can see that there's just, there are no tables here. Yeah? So, poof, we're doing a real genuine movement here. Um, so, we just do a data export, and what you do, you just select table, uh, the schema, sorry. Uh, we can select object, but we're going to go for the whole lot. And we're going to dump it to a self contained file, uh, put it in one place, and I'm actually going to put it there. And we just do start export. 
Um, there's no password on that one database. And you know, so it just starts, and it takes well, two, three seconds. Um, this is working so far. Um, so now we're just going to transfer the database over. And what we do, I was going to say we can do a data impulse and restore, but we don't want to do that just yet because um, what I need to do is to just edit the schema that I want to send it to. Where did I put that dump? It's in documents, isn't it? Documents, dumps. There you go. Is it 25th today? It is. So we'll open that. Um, use Komodo as my editor of choice. Does anyone fancy starting an editor war today? Who likes why? Who likes Emacs? Right, you two, later. <laughs> I'll I, I, I put my money on Todd, I think. <laughs> um, okay, that doesn't matter because I don't care. Um, there's a... Why is not going to open the door out there? It's, it's, coming in. it's quite big. So, I want to change the schema so that we don't have to write another one that I've been working on. So I can call it David Coveney. If you're doing migrations within the same server, this is where you can really spoil your day by forgetting which database dump you're moving to which schema. Um, anyway, we'll hit save on that. Did that work? Do you, yeah. do you not want to change your database as well? What's up? Um, yeah, I called it WP. It doesn't matter actually because the, it already exists, so it won't create it. There's already one called WP, so it doesn't work. I'm going to be lazy. But you're right, if, you, if you're doing it properly, um, do check your database as well as what scheme you're using. Uh, one thing that's actually quite interesting is that terminology gets mixed up. WordPress terminology refers to a database when it really means a schema. But a lot of people do that, a lot of hosts do that, don't they? And it's, it's really confusing to anybody who's got a database background. It, it threw me for ages at first. So, um, our file copy is finished, by the way. And what I want to do is to invade into I'm going to do a data import. It's not really designed to touch this, so we're going to um, import a dump from a file. And let's find the little one. Starts at one, isn't it? And we're going to start the import. And this will take a few seconds. Well, Anyway, one day, um, that'll come back, and um, it should only take a few seconds, but it's obviously, well, it's got a parcel, quite a big file there, but we can see here now, if we just refresh that, because the database has not been moved, we've got an error established in the database connection, but shortly, once that's happened, um, would you like a song? <laughs> I like to move. Um, this is the slowest import I've seen. Did the deep copy database exist already? Um, the David Coven schema already existed, but it should have just overwritten that. Because if it didn't, you have to create it, right? So, yeah. yeah. Well, it would just create it. <coughs> okay. Oh, uh, live demos now. So what have we got now? Has anything happened? No, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drop the whole scheme in. Yeah. Let's see what happened. Uh, I'm winging it now. Um, is this oh not responding? <laughs> Anyway, in theory, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, my school workbench, for, for doing that. Um, That's why people move to SQL Pro. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. Um, is it a good tool? SQL Pro, yeah. Well, I'll check it out tomorrow. Because <laughs> that is not helping me, is it? I'm going to just kill 
nice girl work, then she just going to close the program. Um, yeah, 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 go away. I don't, I don't want a solution to the problem. Just, just, just get away. Go. Get it. What are you doing? So, let's try again. Um, so when it comes back, I'm trying to restore. And so I'll just connect to the vagrant again. Here we are. So it's still got that scheme in there. But uh, what I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to try to get to it and Without... Worked yesterday. Okay. And it looks a lot different this time, doesn't it? Um, ah, George, George. Yeah. Anyone got any ideas? Don't do demonstrations like that. Pardon? They always go wrong. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's it's annoying, isn't it? It's even worse if you're in front of a customer. Look on the right side. Well, yeah, I'm doing this in front of clients a lot, actually. It's part of training. So I'm going to try. You know what? I'm just going to try and create a brand new schema. Shall we do that? Have we got time? Okay. Uh, a little bit, like five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Yeah. We can do this in five minutes. It normally takes me five minutes. And I'm on board yet. So let's just call it. Um, It's quite a big file. Like I said, this should actually take about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Um, I really recommend something called SQL Pro. Uh, <laughs> it's a really good tool for this. Um, what you do is you, you would run SQL Pro uh, and you'd, you'd be off and you'd have a great time. Um, so in the absence of that, what, what I'm going to do is just show you the next step I'm just going to pretend to do it. Um, so what, what I'll do then is, if you, write, if you go onto Vagrant now, you would see the site, but as soon as you click a link, it wouldn't work. Um, because it would be all pointing to David Koenig on WAP. So you've got to change that URL. Um, I hope this one works. <laughs> um, so, what we're going to do now, we're going to do a search for place for David Coveney dot one and change it to David Coveney dot dev. Has anybody here used the new version of search for place? Yeah? How did it go over there? Yeah, it worked. Yeah? It, was your database all right afterwards? Yeah? Did you look really closely? Okay. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, no, actually, it's only if you've got like mad encoding so it was going wrong, but um, it was suffering from what I call the Cheshire Cat bug, which is where if you had a, a UTF-8-16 character, it would corrupt everything after it, um, which turned out to be a bit awkward. We fixed that now. Um, but it was actually, it, it all went through the unit tests correctly, but the unit tests were wrong. So, um, Anyway, on this now, you can select the tables if you want, so you can do it by table. Um, but what's nice about it is that the search place tools go, it gives you the facility to just do a dry run. Um, the beauty of a dry run is, you've got, you know, you can see what, what's going to be changed on the uh, site. And why are we seeing just that? I don't know why, it's probably going through the audit 
table, which takes about 20 seconds to run through. Um, I wonder if that looked that. Oh, look, the imports worked. Hey! <laughs> No, for next time, give it a bit more time. Um, that was probably just the problem. So actually now, if we go to uh, here, and, uh, oh, yeah, because I put it in, fuck it, haven't I? Um, so, <laughs> let's go to um, this. Let's just edit the repeat config. So if you've changed where you're putting, um, oh, really got it. Go. Oh, done. It's slowing down, can I do um, So if you go to do a code, so the database was, is now, um, fuck it. And if we take a look, okay, what else have I done wrong? Oh yeah, password. It's a different password on the background. Um, so, you know, okay, I'm going to ignore that for now. Um, I know why that happened. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm starting to stress out now. Um, Are you sure you're editing the files and language? Pardon? Are you sure you're editing the files and language? No. Editing the final angle, thank you. You see, that's the kind of thing that goes wrong all the time in migration. It actually is quite true. Have you, have you done that in real life? Edited the wrong server? Yeah. yeah we've all done it, haven't we? Um, and I've just shown you how that happens. So. <laughs> Did you just say that aloud loud once? No, I just took down my, my password. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I just took down my old development copy of the book. Oh, God, I wouldn't do this on the internet. That would be even worse. Um, if you think this is embarrassing, um, right. <laughs> oh, what's taking so long? Um, in a few seconds. Yes! <laughs> that wasn't at all painful, was it? <laughs> and I'm now worried that I forgot to turn off caching. And uh, something won't work, but let's see. Um, so, yeah, to, to make it work properly, we need to do David Cameron dot web to David Cameron dot dev. And we can do a dry, dry run, and we should start seeing results from that. Uh, one thing we found was that if you've got caching turned on, because we load WordPress to do this, it was breaking it. Um, we fixed that, but I haven't got the latest version from today of search place. So fingers crossed we don't get an error message in a second. But what will happen is once it's hit through the audit log, you start to see all those changes. And that means you can check that you haven't actually screwed up your database in the process of doing a search place. Um, but I know this takes about 25 seconds, which is an eternity when you're standing on the stage with a microphone, having just made people sit through and watch you fail to migrate SQL data. So, um, I, I'm just regretting saying yes to that. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I've travelled two hours to get here, um, worked all day, I had five hours of sleep last night. Um, Oh, I know what I've done. I know why everything's slower. Power saver. Everything will go a bit faster now. So, there you go, it's all a bit quicker. Um, yeah, that's from the checklist in the future. And uh, turn off power saver. Um, so, here you go. So, you can actually see now we've got various changes on the database. And you can take a look, and you can actually see what's been changed. Uh, we can close that, you can have a look at um, post content. So you get this diff of information, which I think it's the only tool that does that. And if you run through, you can just see everything that's done, mostly, within, within limits. It won't actually show you everything, it shows you a selective sample, because otherwise it would just be too slow to load up on a large search place. So we're happy with that, so let's do a, a live run. Actually, you know what, to make it a bit quicker, I'm going to select all of them 
except And we're going to do a live one. They ask you, you know, have you backed it up? Haven't. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so off it goes, and it's doing the run. You get five seconds to stop it, in, and you can see it's chundering through. And to be honest, already I know it's done on WP options, and I know it's done WP posts, and I know that if we look at the website now, um, let's go back a little. Yeah. Um, if I just do a refresh on that. Um, F5. If I click a link, everything links to David Cody up there. And there you go. After a bit of a fight, <laughs> we've done a migration. Live. <laughs> Thank you very much, you. Well, thank you. Thank you.